Are deltas fast? Yes. How fast are they? Yes. I mean, it's complicated. <laughs> All right, you got me. I actually have no idea. But that changes today. This is Carbon Strike, my ultralight delta design. I recently did some motion testing at 800 millimeters per second, where I stepped up acceleration until I ran out of testing macros at 130k, then increased speed until I got a skip at 1000 millimeters per second. So what did I learn from that? To be honest, not much. There's a different speed limit for each acceleration and vice versa, so I didn't find any edges of this machine's limits for certain. Also, I was only testing X motion, Deltas have different speed limits at every point and every vector in their XY range, so I didn't get useful speed limit info for complex motion either. I needed a better testing method, so I made more testing macros and a motion pattern that goes from plus to minus 50 in X and Y. I'm going to find out just how hard this machine can go over a full regime of speeds and accelerations. I'll start at 800 millimeters per second and step up in increments of 100. I'll find the highest acceleration that doesn't skip at each step until it literally can't go faster. I made macros for up to 2000 millimeters per second and 200k, so let's see what happens. Maybe I'll break the machine in the process. I got everything built for the new motion system and I'm about to replace it, so I don't care that much. No, I do care, but let's go anyway. I hit this wall at 1200 millimeters per second, where I had to drop Excel by 100k before it would stop skipping. I'm not sure why. Steppers are weird. Deltas are weird. Put them together and it's too weird. I'm just kidding. Steppers work like generators and they actually generate electricity even when you're putting electricity in to drive them. That's called back EMF. Back EMF voltage goes up with speed, and when you're going fast enough for it to rival the input voltage from your power supply, the torque drops off fast. And it's fine until it's not, basically. It takes so much torque to move the printer's mass at any given acceleration, and if you command a speed where the back EMF is canceling out too much torque, you're going to skip. Skips with deltas aren't good. Good. 
1500 is still good. 1500. You may be wondering at this point, why can this printer go so fast? Because I can tell you, these steppers should be way past their torque drop-off points for 24 volts for these speeds. Am I testing or measuring something wrong? I don't think so. So what's up? Are deltas just magically fast? No, they're sciencely fast. The reason is simple, and it explains not only the Delta reputation for speed, but almost everything else you hear about them too. And yet, I think hardly anyone actually gets it. So what's the secret? Yeah, the subject of a future video, that's what. So stay tuned. Uh, reporting a top requested speed of 1733. Okay, that's as fast as this will go. So let's rewind and review, see what we can learn from the slow-mo and from comparing different clips. I find this head-to-head -head comparison really interesting. Look at the bottom row for 1700 at 40k. See the jerk at the start of each loop? It's skipping. The head is not returning all the way to the beginning point. But I never would have noticed that if I hadn't cut this video and put the footage head-to-head. -head. So clearly 1700 at 40k is just a little too fast. Here's something else that's interesting in this slow motion drag race. You can see that in practical terms, setting a higher speed and lower acceleration may not be practically faster than a lower speed with a higher acceleration over short distances. Okay, so what did I learn from this testing methodology and what can I do with the results? Now, for example, real printing adds the whole extra dimension of extrusion, so this isn't telling me how fast I can print, at least not directly. But I did learn about the extreme edges of the performance envelope, and I discovered where the torque drop-off is for this setup. I'm surprised it's so high, but I'm pleased, and I think it really proves out my mass cutting strategy. Plus, if this is how high the limits are, it only means print quality will be better in the safer parts of the envelope. I learned from the slow-mo that my flying gantry likely needs to lose some weight, and I established a baseline for this setup that I can now use for comparison against any future changes. Everything I did for this testing is in this video, and I think anyone with a little knowledge of G-Code and of their printer firmware can follow the same steps. What do you think? Did I miss anything? Do these results mean anything? Did they surprise you? I'll be honest, they surprised me. Let me know in the comments.